Hello! Today I'm a flying overview of the Vocoder project, moving over to the filter boards. They're all stood up because I wanted to show you the ribbon cables that run underneath. Now there's a 16-way ribbon cable here. Only eight ways are used for signals, the other eight are used for uh, earth. And that means that in between each signal line, there's a ground line to act as a little bit of uh, interference suppression. Now there are two ribbon cables. This one is, well, it's supposed to be an eight way, but it's actually a 10 way because I ordered the wrong cable and plugs some time back. So I want to replace this. Um, and there's more than one reason for wanting to do that. You see on these original ribbon cables, um, these ones go from the center of these boards. Now these boards, when they're on the front panel are actually two and a half inches apart. I made this cable up to 2.6 inches because I figured that if when the boards get put onto the final front panel, you can have a little bit of flex in the cable like that. So it'll still work even when these are mounted to the, uh, the metal work. These are slightly different because if you look at the sockets here, there's one on each side of the board. Now that means that these two here are quite close to each other. And I'm just not sure um, about flexibility of ribbon cable between two very closely spaced sockets. So I looped them back and round so that you have the flexibility in here. Now today I'm gonna to make up a cable with just um, 0.6 inches between these two. Nominally it's 0.5 inches if the uh, boards were in their nominal position, but I'm gonna make that slightly wider to match this. Now, can you flex the cable between these two connectors with that shorter distance between them? I don't know, but I guess I'm about to find out. Um, okay, so up the end of the table, I've got the final output mixer. Uh, it kind of was a bit of a bodge putting it here, but actually it works out quite well stood up an end because I've got quite a weighty adapter here. That's the final output of the vocoder. It's on a quarter inch jack, but I've adapted it first to a mono phono and then to stereo phono simply to drive both um, channels in my audio amplifier and system. Um, this cable will come off. It, it goes on to there. Now in this cable, you've got the two outputs from the vocoder um, it's not stereo, but it's two outputs. One is the inverse of the other. Yes, in this cable, you've got um, plus and minus 12 volts ground, lots of grounds, because again, ground is on every alternate position, um, plus the two outputs um, from the vocoder with grounds in between them. So that's what's on here. Um, so I'm going to go to the proper eight-way cable with eight-way connectors, not this 10-way one. Um, put these narrow... Uh, distances between these two and just see whether that works. Um, so that's what I'm going to do today. Oh yeah, what I wanted to say is plus and minus 12 runs down here. So that's actually powering this board. So if you look on the top of this board, it's not actually got its 12012 connector fitted. Um, and that's because all of these filter boards are being powered by 16 inner loops up there in two battery boxes, a top box and a bottom box. They don't last very long, actually. And what I've been finding with these is that one of the cells will inevitably um, flatten before all the others. And then it gets pushed negative. And one of these was at minus 0.1 volts. And it was a bit of a struggle to get it back. But uh, anyway, I'll have to worry about that another time. But uh, today, the ribbon cable. So let's get started on that. So I bought three meters of this eight-way cable i've been experimenting with pushing the connector on um actually we could have a look at that let me get my magnifying glass so you can see the indentations i'll flip it over actually um that the spikes on the idc connector make um and they push either side of where the copper strands down the middle of those cables would be and then the copper strands end up in the little uh, slots in the uh, connector. I'll, I'll show that now as well. So these are the connectors. Um, they're little V-shaped pieces. Uh, one for each connector. They're kind of staggered so that the, uh, because of course you've got two rows of four there and you need one row of eight. 
at half of a tenth of an inch spacing but the wires will I mean they don't they're not sharp they're fairly fat they're not pointed in any way but the wires are forced down those little slits they're very narrow if I can get this all to work um, and the wire is forced down between the two blades can't get a good image of this but uh, yeah that's how it's worked the the copper wire the insulation is displaced away and the copper wire is forced down the slot between the two blades so I bought three meters of this cable the first thing I want to do is cut about one meter off um, now these print sections are about 12 inches apart so let's just have three of those and cut it there so I'll just use scissors for this uh, it cuts through really quite easily. The copper strands are very tiny, I, I think. So now I've got to get this uh, the right way round. So pin one is the red wire. I've marked pin one on this connector with that little black mark. It is actually an arrow, but it's a bit soft. Uh, it's also visible on the underside. Probably need a magnifying glass for this. Um, it's slightly... Oh gosh, that's rather difficult. Yeah, top right, you can see just looks bigger, but it is actually a square pad. It's been soldered on, so you can't see it very well, but that is pin one, which looks like it's a ground. So one, three, five, and seven are all ground connections. So the connector has to go onto the wire like uh, this. So I'll just put it there and put the top piece on. Now one of the issues with this, um, particularly as I'm going to have, be having those two connectors so close to each other, 0.6 inches apart, is the rotational accuracy of this. Um, how do I know that it's completely square? And I do need to get it completely square. So what I want to try and do is push this on a little way, uh, visually and with my fingers, and you can go so far but you really can't make uh, much of an impression on that just by pressing it. So the next stage, I'm going to have to use the vise. But if I can get it partly on, I mean, you can see I have to press pretty hard um, just by pressing it and then vise it completely closed. That should do it. Now, ideally, I'd just have a bench vise to do this. I don't have that. I've got this one that hangs over the edge of the desk. Um, but with that pressed on, then I should be able to just lower that into the jaws, wind them in and close that with all the force of the vise. That's enough. And that is completely pressed down onto that cable. And it should hopefully be as square as it was when I put it on. Does that look square? I'm not looking at the camera straight on. Yeah, that looks reasonably good. So now I need to um, work out the spacings of these connectors. Now the distance between these two connectors is exactly two inches, but I'm going to fit them at 2.1. So there will be a slight bend in the wire, either inwards or outwards. Uh, the distance between this connector and the adjacent one on the next board is 0.5 inches, but I'm going to make it 0.6 because I want to see whether that tiny strip of ribbon cable can actually accommodate a bit of flex so that these boards can be um, 0.6 inches between those two connectors and then pushed in to be 0.5. It may not work and I may have to make a new ribbon cable but it's not hugely expensive, the cable or the connectors, so I can do that. But yeah, I'm going to go 2.1, 0.6, 2.1, 0 0.6, and so on. So this connector pushes down onto that board like so. Then it bends round and goes underneath these boards. So these connectors need to face up. But actually, if you allow this one to rotate round, it's facing up. So in fact, all the connectors face in the same direction. So I just need to get all the spacings and uh, then I'll have a ribbon cable that will connect from these boards to this board.
So I think I'll start in the middle with this section of print, so around where that 300 volts is, with my first two connectors at 2.1, then 0.6, then 2.1, and I'll just work outwards. So let's get some connectors and get started on that. Here are the uh, eight-way connectors, or the first load of them. I've got another bag of these somewhere. Um, so yes, these will be face up with the notch. Now you can get sockets for these and the little notch uh, there, that little notch stops you putting this thing in the wrong way round. But I'm just using uh, sort of DuPont style double row uh, connectors for this because I'm trusting myself to plug this in the right way each time and not uh, get it wrong and blow everything up. So, okay, let's put my first two connectors on. So I've got a ruler here that's got uh, 20ths of an inch, but also if you go up to 12, it's got tenths of an inch. It's a very handy ruler for doing old school tenth of an inch type stuff. So I'm going to use this ruler and a fine point sharpie to make my marks. Now the only trouble is if you make a mark for the center of the connector, once you put the connector on, you can't see the marks. You then need to put two additional marks either side so you can keep it within um, the range of that mark, as it were. So let's mark my center line. And then 2.1 is all oh, one and half a grade. And here, one and half a gradu, a graticule, whatever these are called. Um, so that's my 2.1. Then I need 0.6. Oh, working from a half is not ideal. Okay, well, let's move that to 15 and put in the 0.6. That will be there. Is that right? Yeah, that looks right. Uh, and similarly on this side, let's put the 13 inch mark there and go to 0.6, which will be there. Now, those are the centers, as I say, but I'll need to put little margins either side of them uh, when I put the connectors on. Uh, so my connect, now that's the, my center points, there's no connector there. I need a connector here, so let's put lines either side of that. Connector here, lines either side of that. Hope they're wide enough that I can see them. Lines either side of that, and lines either side of that. That's where the connectors are going. Let's put some on. So if I hold that top piece underneath the ribbon cable, it's not very easy rotating it. So I think I'm gonna to have to put this on. And then press it down very gently, lift it up and do the rotational alignment by eye uh, here. I can't do it through the camera, so I'm gonna to have to do it off camera, but let's get, and then I'll press fairly hard with my fingers and then stick it straight in the vise. Okay, next one goes there. They are pretty close, aren't they? But that's where it goes. Put the connector down. No, that's the wrong way. Spiky pins go into the wire, don't they? Okay, let's reposition that. Try and get it as accurate as I can. They're very close together, these. 0.6 of an inch. So it's about there, I think. Turn it over, check the alignment. Yeah, it's about as good as I'm going to get it. Press it, bring it into the vise, which you can't see. And there are my two connectors, 0.6 of an inch apart. And the question is, can you flex the cable? <laughs> Not very easily, but you can. It requires that you sort of pre-flex it but yeah you can do it but it's not like uh, the 2.1 inches where it flexes nice and easily either way here you'd have to pre-make that flex but let's not flex it because i really want these to be 0.6 of an inch apart right that's done so we've got um first pair second pair third pair fourth pair fifth pair because there are five of these boards. And then a little further up, we've got this one. 
So this one connects to the output board like so. Uh, it goes on that way around. Incidentally, one other thing I've done is I've put hot glue, not sure how well this shows up on the camera, hot glue under these pots because when I was doing things like this that required a bit of force, I just kept bending these pots and you know these legs are only going to take three or four bends and then the thing will come off so uh, I've hot glued them so it's a little bit more solid that's not going to go anywhere so that one goes like that this sits sort of up vertically this will then thread over the top like so and then these pairs of connectors will go on these boards uh, which board is this this is 11 and 12 so this goes right up at this end so let's put that one on there so it'll go I need to put my little bend in the wire like that push that on there oh they're quite tight but then these are brand new connectors I suppose so yeah that sits like that that as I said was two inches between these two points but I put uh, 2.1 inches of cable in there just so it absorbs a little bit of that um, well any error with the rotational uh, connections now that the, the tricky thing will be this and the boards either side of it so let's get all the other boards now I'm not sure quite how much of this the camera is going to capture but this board Ooh, needs oh yeah the output board just fell on the floor this board needs to go here and that connector fits on there and then this one two inches further down the line got to put the bend in my cable um, at the same time I need to now put the uh, 16 way Let's put that bit of cable over there. The 16-way cable on here. That should be not quite as tight. Why won't that go in? Yeah, there it is. Put that on there. Right, I'll just keep threading this cable. Well, I'll do it on camera for a bit and edit it out if it all gets a bit too boring in the final edit. Uh, put that on on there yes these are much neater in terms of how they're going to lie on the bench so it's going to look better visually when i'm doing my filming right let's complete that off camera <laughs> 